he is the one buying the wrecked Nissan Leaf. Hi Leaf. Arthur is here today interviewing me about the 996, which is kind of cool. Welcome to this small Tesla small drive unit. Maybe today is the day where I can actually mount the motor in the car on the Tesla drive unit that will sit something like this. It turned out to be a beautiful, beautiful night to shoot some pictures and video and some drone. And we're... All right, welcome back to my friend's garage where I am converting a Porsche 911 to electric using a Tesla small drive unit. It's been a while since I've posted, probably like a month or more. And that's mainly because I've just been working on the motor mounts when I have time. And it's been a slow process. There's a lot of like, you know, just staring at the car and designing what I want and then going to the machine shop and cutting metal and trying stuff. And, uh, but it's getting close. I think maybe today's the day where I can actually mount the motor in the car I'll, it'll probably require one or two trips to the machine shop. So it'll be a push if I can do it today, but I'm going to try. Um, the front mount is done. Um, the side mount is getting close and the rear mounts getting close. There are three mounting points on the Tesla drive unit. I'll show you what I'm thinking. All right. So here we go over here. There's actually three um, places where I could, um, where the old mount was. And so I can put bolts into here. The second one is the one right here. And this is a piece, this is a factory cross member piece here. So I'm thinking about making something, I can have it like this, or I could flip it and do it like this. You can see, you know, this obviously would be a little higher. It would go through there. This would need to come up a little bit if I was gonna use it in this orientation, which I think I might. Either way, I can, I'm, I can make something that will work with this cross piece that bolts through here. This has got a slight curve to it, so it's not totally flat. I'll show you the third mount. And these are just the factory mounting points for the Tesla drive unit. The third one is that one there. And I also have this cross mount here, which is like the I think it was for the, well, it was for the transmission. Yeah. So that's what I'm working with so far. I think my, my first step is I need to cut more of the back seat out so I can get it in the right spot. The other thing is I need to get the height right because obviously the car is in the air right now. So the, the suspension is unloaded. It's like if this thing went off a jump, it would look like this in the air. And so, you know, the wheel is going to be pressed up in to the car once it's on the ground. So I need to kind of mimic that ride height. And then obviously I want it as low as I can get it for a low center of gravity. All right, so I just did more cutting of the back seats to try and get the motor up a little bit more and forward a little bit more. It's 90 degrees in here. Took the rear wheels off so I can look through the axle, if you can see the red cup, that's where the uh, drive shaft will come out of the um, drive unit. So I'm gonna pull those cups and it'd be cool if we could see all the way through so we can line it up front to back. And that's just held here with the washer. CNC prototype in East Boulder. Robert here has let me use his machine shop Needs a little lubrication here. Here they are. This one will replace the transmission mount and I can make a, hopefully a motor mount off this. This one is gonna bolt on top of this piece. It's a start, so we'll see, we'll see how this works. All right, so the clearance is so tight between the frame rails that I'm thinking about cut this off. Retain the threads, of course, because I want to use this for a mount. Okay, I cut all the way around it. Seems it's free now. So that's how much thickness I cut off. 
and it tells you how much I need the space. Like this is how close this motor is to fitting between the frame rails. So I'll take the extra, whatever, six millimeters. All right, I just took the grinding wheel to it, smoothed it out. It's pretty flat and my bolt still threads in. So we are good. So here's the rear mount bolted together. It's got two washers in here. In the front, in order to get the, the motor where we need it, like front to back on the car, off of this front mount, I'm gonna have two pieces that kind of go like and house a mount like this. There's gonna be a lot of torque, you know, when the motor is accelerating, it's gonna wanna twist like this. So it's gonna put a lot of stress on both of these, these motor mounts. So this is kind of like my first go at this. I didn't really do anything up off of CAD because I don't really have a model of the underside of the car. Yeah, I'm just kind of like roughing this in. I've bolted my cross member in, and then just with some little clamps, I'm holding on those pieces, two pieces of angle. You can see the motor needs to slide up a little bit more. And you know, I could have put these angle pieces on top or bottom, but I want to keep I want to keep the center of gravity low on this car as much as possible so it just it will handle better the lower all the mass is. All right, I got uh, the front motor mount welded up. Check it out. Here she is, all welded up. Let's see if this bolt will go through. All right, the front is bolted all the way through. It's not done, the motor mounts aren't totally done, but it's pretty close. It's pretty dang close. So now I'm just gonna clean the garage. It's just a disaster. You know that, that nice feeling when you clean? I need that right now. I need like some mental composure. Here's that string I used to line it all up. You can see it going across the back here. It feels really good to have this motor mounted in the car like 80% enough so that it's it's in there without any help from I've pulled the cart out so the cross mount in the back is holding it up there's a mount that's going to go on there and you could see on the side over here we built like a plate system and there's some angle bolted to the frame and then I had to modify the front mount on Friday. There's the front mount. Uh, you can see I had to weld on a little extra because I needed to move it back. So that's it. It's been so much work. I probably have 30 hours into the motor mounts or something crazy. I haven't thought like this in a while, like designing and spatially designing like this. So it's it took me a while to get back in that that kind of mindset and then I hadn't machined anything in like, feels like 10 years or something. So I had to, and if, you know, it's easy to learn how to use the mill and all that stuff, but you know, I just want to be safe. So I was a little slow getting back into it. Next will be, next will be starting to think about the battery box. Well, I am going to shoot, do like a photo and video shoot for a, Porsche 911 GT3. I'm a little nervous just because I want to get it right. I want it to be amazing. <laughs> I want the owner of the car to be happy with the pictures because I think they're going to use them to help sell the car.
turned out to be a beautiful, beautiful night to shoot some, some pictures and video and some drone. And we're, I mean, the sunset's incredible up here against the mountain. We're gonna end with a little drive with all of these cars. Thanks for watching. I know it's been a long time since the last update, but really just the machining and stuff wasn't too exciting. Cutting holes and metal and, and cutting metal and just the iterative process. Um, yeah, it just took a while, <laughs> but I'm, I'm glad we're wrapping it up here. Thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you next time.